Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True Nerd, and welcome to Train Station Simulator. Oh yes, I am pushing nerdery to new heights here. This is basically a theme park builder, except instead of building a theme park or building Jurassic Park or anything like that, you're building a train station, and that just really flipping appeals. So say hello to my currently rather sad little train station. It's 1970. I've got 200,000 US dollars sitting in the back, which in 1970, it's a hell of a lot of money. I don't think I should bother building a rail station. I should just basically go and buy my own private island and then just go and live there. That'd be marvellous. And yes, my entire train station is just basically one track, one set of buffers, and a single platform with a sign that's in the middle of a field. So, you know, we're not exactly starting with an amazing rail empire here, but there's plenty of room to grow as time goes by. So this game's basically about balancing getting people into your station and making sure they have a nice time when they get there and then making sure the trains are actually coming in to service them once they're there. So, my starting priority and where I should probably just start off by dropping a bit of money will be making sure people can actually come and get to my train station. So, probably as a decent starting point over here. Yes, this is good. Nice cheap way to kick things off here. Let's actually just get ourselves a nice taxi stand so that people can actually arrive and leave via a taxi. Yes, I know a taxi stand is actually for where people catch taxis away from the train station, but it still generates passengers, it's fine. And the same for a little bit of bicycling. Let's just get some bicycles in as well. So that's going to just generate a certain amount of passengers per hour, even though I've had to spend a bit of money on it, which is absolutely lovely. And the next thing we need to do, of course, is just actually convert this from a field into an actual nice train station that would just be flipping lovely. We don't exactly need a huge train station yet, just a little train station will do for the minute. Priorities, just a nice place for a handful of people to wait while they're waiting for their train, that would just be spot on. And ideally, somewhere for them to actually buy some tickets would be good as well. It's 1970, is that a bit early for ticket machines? I don't know whether that might be actually a bit early for ticket machines, but screw it, we'll have a few ticket machines so that people can actually buy their own tickets as they come in. Absolutely lovely. Right now, this can just remain an outdoor station. We don't need to waste money on walls or any of that business. Absolutely fine. And here we go, a timetable board. That's probably a good thing as well. Spin that around so as customers arrive, they can actually see what's going on. That is probably good enough as a starting point. So, get time ticking along here. I've spent a little bit of money there, but as a result of just spending that money, we should now have, yes indeed, customers should start arriving as time goes by, and as trains start arriving, that will work as well. Now, I can just use my timetable to figure out what's going on in the world. So, my first train is going to pull in at 5.30am and then leave at 7. That's going to be a commuter train. So, we've got a couple of commuter trains, then a national service, then we've got some city link and a bit of a blend coming in the evening. Fine. So commuter, just kind of local, then national trains. And in come the trains. Yay, there's a train. So people are hopefully buying a ticket and just getting straight in the train. And also people just kind of, you know, appear off the train in a flash of light. And hopefully people will just buy tickets, go on train, everything will be absolutely flipping fine. And then, yeah, when we hit 8am, that train will... Was it 8am? Or was it 5.30 for... No, it's 5.30 for 7. So that train's going to naff off in just 15 minutes, uh, 10 minutes now, and hopefully that will generate a little bit of money for me. I hope you didn't just miss that train, by the way. If so, that's your own bloody fault. You'll have to wait for the next one. And you know what? I'll splash a bit of cash. We can have one wall in this train station. One wall is good enough as a starting point. People show up, they actually buy their tickets, that's all we need as a starting point. And we can also get, and this is what I always like, there's proper individualised needs. So people have got mood, tiredness, bladder, thirst and hunger. And also, ah, okay, this is interesting. One of the trains that just showed up has actually got itself three carriages rather than two. Check the timetable. What's the longest train we've got coming in right now? We've got, yeah, we do have some threes coming in. So therefore, we should probably actually fix up the uh, station a little bit to actually suit that. So, build me a platform out to here. Make sure we can actually, like, you know, service the actual size of trains that are going to be coming in. That's absolutely fine. Lovely. So now, people can actually get on the... Sorry, did you just actually do that? Never mind, I think we got the platform a bit backwards there. Just a second. Now when we announce stand behind the yellow line, please, it'll actually make cocking sense. 
And we'll extend the wall out a little bit as well, so that all works as well. There we go. This is starting to look like a bloody train station at this point. So now we've got people coming in. I'll just have a little look at these people. Yeah, for the most part, they're a little bit on the hungry side, so we should probably... Ah, look, money's starting to come in. People are getting on this train. Now, weirdly, the way this game works is the happier people are, the more they'll pay for tickets. Not just like the more they're willing to pay for tickets, you don't set ticket prices, it's just actually people seem to just voluntarily pay more for tickets because they're happier. It's a very strange system, but I guess it kind of makes sense in a way. Right, employees, because that is mess down there. Someone's... what have they even done? What even is that? Has someone vomited and then tried to like half-heartedly clean it up with newspaper and then given up halfway through? I don't know. I should probably have a nice cleaning person. So a 30-year-old single guy from Manhattan? Sure, we'll actually have him. Also, he's got a cat called Harry Potter. Yeah, 100% we're gonna hire that guy. Now, how long do we want your day to be? We probably don't need you first thing. Like, if there's a little bit of mess during the day, that's fine. So we'll have you start at like 8 and then wrap up at like 6. And we'll pay you 400. That changes your... Ah, that changes your level of productivity. Fine. And then if we just make you work for too long, your mood goes down, your productivity goes down. Fine. Uh, well, a 10-hour day is probably absolutely fine there. So, we've now got ourselves a cleany person who will hopefully go around and clean. That'll be you there. So, hopefully, you're immediately just kind of gravitating towards the mess. And you will start cleaning that mess up. Yes, there we go. Well done. So now I'm going to have a lovely, lovely clean. There we go. That's much flipping better. Now, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Vandal. Oh, dear. I can't help but notice that we've got someone kicking the hell out of my machine over there. Please stop. All right, fine. <laughs> Looks like we might actually have to get myself a nice police officer a little bit earlier than I was expecting to, but whatever. Okay, one police officer. Butch, there's a good name for a police officer. Honestly, I'd like you to be around all... Actually, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm happy for your mood to be quite low, because I'd rather just have you around, to be honest. So we'll have you working a 12-hour shift. Arguably, it's a little bit on the excessive side, but it'll be fine. Can we get away with paying you less? We get away with paying you... Yes, actually, I can pay you just 250 and it doesn't affect your productivity or mood at all. Great! Now, where's my new guy? And is he... Oh, nice, he just... Did you just make that guy explode? Okay, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but that might have been a little bit overkill. Now, what have we got going on here? It's 20 past 12. We've got to be due for a train at some point pretty soon. What happened to the 11.30? Did we just miss that? That really should have arrived by now, shouldn't it? Also, where's my cleaner? Because he really needs to do more flipping. Yeah, people are just vomiting everywhere. Apparently, I need more flipping cleaners. In fact, if I just actually have two cleaners at like half the wage, that works just perfectly. And to make sure we've got good coverage, they can partly overlap. But for the most part, yeah, midnight's the end. You actually start like... Yeah, you start in the afternoon. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and we'll pay you... We'll pay you 200. Yeah, you both pay 200. That's absolutely fine. So Emily and Thomas are going to just get on with doing all of the cleaning. Lovely. And hopefully that will keep all this mess up. Wait, where did that train just come from? Did that train just appear out of nowhere? I swear that wasn't there a second ago. <laughs> Possibly because the tracks are now covered in... Okay, seriously? Everybody stop it. You're ruining my lovely, lovely train station. Do you need me to put bins down? You probably want bins, don't you? Yes, trash cans. That would be a good idea. Right, so roller coaster tycoon this all up a little bit. Let's just actually stick some bins down here. Bins over here. And we can have some more bins over here and here. And is that actually facing the right? I think that might have been facing the wrong way. Actually, it does look like the bins work in both directions by the looks of it. So that should hopefully be fine. So I'm hoping that now as a result of this, the garbage situation is going to be a bit less severe. Because, yeah, we're struggling to uh, keep up with the garbage, even with two actual cleaners on you. Where the hell are my cleaners, by the way? You guys... Okay, there's one of you over there. I recognise your orange thing. And why are you littering over there? And also, why is it my responsibility if you're littering over there? This really isn't my fault. Right, what are you people all thinking? You're thinking you'd like, a uh, ah, you'd like food, drink, all of the rest of that business. Well, that I can certainly do as well. 
Okay, little bit of an extended food court over here. Now there's a little food truck and there's also going to be a coffee stand. Now you're probably noticing little bits of money are floating up here. However, I'm not actually gaining the money. You take the money at the end of the day, which I guess sort of makes a bit more sense than just kind of coming in to be spent as happens. So... I suppose that's fine. We've got cyclists coming in, and yes, people are just chilling out. Everything's looking pretty happy. Now, I've spent, like, you know, two-thirds of my money already, but we've got, yep, we've got food sales, coffee sales. People have got places to sit. They've got bins now, so hopefully... Yeah, there's definitely less litter than there was. Admittedly, a lot of people are vomiting an awful, awful lot. More than I realistically expect, actually. And then we've got, yeah, people just flashing into existence. And they are also... Weirdly paying, and now everyone just, yep, everybody just get onto this train, marvellous. Let's just check a few people. Bladder, right, we got bladder problems. Well, that's fine. Objects, yeah, objects, the thing is, objects are cheap but can be vandalised. If you build a proper big building, like a proper facility, I mean, that cannot be vandalised, but it's a lot more expensive. So, I'd say, yeah, a very small public restroom is probably not a bad idea. If I could just... Ah, I could just squeeze this into the corner over here. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Though, probably, therefore, I want to actually get rid of, like, this bench. You don't really want benches right next to the bathrooms. So we've got a little bathroom in the corner, so people can actually use the bathroom. It's a unisex bathroom right now. People coming in. Everyone's got what they want. So they can get food. They can get drink. They can actually go to the bathroom after they're done. Marvellous. Yeah, you're bladdery, but hopefully, therefore, you can just... Oh, yeah. Your mood is just marvellous. So, this is all good news indeed. Now, so far, we haven't really been paying too much attention to the timetable. We've just been basically... Getting the basics set up and, you know, making sure there's the bare minimum what we need to actually keep people happy in our station. Which is a good idea. And also I'll put another wall up and some doors. So now people can only enter and leave through the doors. So if I want to kind of, you know, control the direction people are moving through my station. Also, where the hell are my actual staff? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, it's Emily. Right, Emily, where are you? Because you should probably, like, be cleaning up all of the mess. There's, like, a giant pile of mess you don't really seem to be cleaning up. But whatever, it's okay. <laughs> Soon the day will end. I think the day ends at midnight, technically. And then we see what my takings for the day were. If I want, I'm waiting for that. I might just actually put some nice little... Yeah, just some decorations down. Just like, you know, handful of plants just to cheer people up and make them happy to be coming into my station. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. And we'll have one of them right there. There we go. That'll cheer people up. So... $46,000 currently in the kitty. Yep, there we go. So, everyone now naps off. The last train is gone. Now, between midnight and 5 a.m., something very interesting happens, which is you can't just go around changing the timetable during the day. However, during the night, you can actually make changes. Because you'll probably notice that we can't actually have absolutely all of these trains in. For the very simple reason, if I wanted to have this national service, I couldn't have this commuter train. And the reason for that is, uh, this train departs at 4pm, and this train will be scheduled to arrive at 3.30. So what I'm going to try and do if I can is, uh, have as many commuter trains as possible. So I want to have all the commuter trains, and then one city link in the middle. The reason for that is, you can actually try and encourage different types of people to show up. Oh, and by the way, I got my money in. So actually, I made like 60,000 back, so... Uh, you know what? I don't need to spend, like, as much money on infrastructure tomorrow. So that's all absolutely 100% fine. That's actually a pretty good result as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to basically say, yeah, we're giving up on... We're giving up on this one. And actually, if I was to cancel this, I could have this. That's times two. Then I could squeeze in a national that also had... That was two. Actually, yeah, if I go for... If I go for this commuter train, then I've only got, yeah, a total of six trains during the day. If I go for this one, I can actually squeeze in seven. So that's definitely the better way to go. So this is where things start getting a bit more interesting. I've got the same number of commuter trains in, which is, yeah, I've got five commuter trains. One national, and actually that national over there is quite a big one, so that would presumably hold more customers. But it's fine. It's fine for the time being. That's a decent timetable to kick us off. So tomorrow, we're going to be going crazy on the commuters. That means I want as many commuters in as possible, which means I should invest in getting commuters in. And they're colour-coded in blue. So a commuter bus station costs me 20000 but generates passengers of 10 to 20 per hour, and it's also vandal-proof. So I'm going to set up one of those immediately. We'll put that right there. Absolutely beautiful. So that is now a commuter bus link. 
but I need to actually set the schedule for that bus link to make sure commuters aren't arriving at stupid times. Because if commuters arrive too early and spend ages clogging up my station, then they might get angry and unhappy, then they'll pay less for their tickets when their train does show up, is how I think it all works. So, the trains are setting off at 7am, 10am and 1pm, that's the first three that we're actually servicing. So, hang on, let's just actually get that set up. So I'd say anything from 6am, it's fine for people to just kind of start arriving at that point. So 6am and then we'll skip the 7am one. Then at that point, yeah, we can have these two arriving to service the 10am. Uh, no point of bus arriving at 10am because they won't have time to actually get to the station. Then it's 2-1, so we may as well just have the 12pm coming in. And what do we have coming in later in the day? So there's another commuter train coming in at... That's leaving at 6. Yeah, one leaving at 6 and one leaving at 10. So we want to be having... Yeah, this will do for servicing the 6pm one. There's a load of buses around there. And then we may as well just have the 8 and... 7 might be a bit aggressive. Ah, eh, screw it. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to actually cost any more to actually have more buses. So we've probably got the station capacity for this. That will do for the time being. So now I've just laid on a whole bunch of buses and the buses should be delivering people at about the right time to actually go over to this train. What I will, however, do is I'll also just lay down... Probably wouldn't hurt to have an actual ticket office, by the way, because, yeah, those are vandal-proof. Those cost 15000 right there. Spin that round. So, yeah, we've actually got a ticket booth right there that services just about anyone. I can actually put that... Yeah, I'll put that in the middle. It's kind of nice for that to be in the middle. And I'll put a couple more actual... Uh, yeah, just some ticket machines over on this wall as well, just for people who are coming in from this side, and maybe just like another set right there. We are however going to be servicing a fair few more people now, so I'm just going to whack up the number of benches, just to make sure that's all as it should be. I could also spend $15,000 on an information stand that's vandal proof and would need to information plus 10, so better informed passengers, fresh fruit stand, passengers can buy food, no no, they can already buy some food over here, it's fine. I'd say probably we're okay for, yeah, one information stand or a newspaper stand. Let's go for an information stand. Information stand would be fun. Where do I want to have that, by the way? Because we've got, yeah, we've got these two doors right here. Where do I want to put you? Or maybe I could have... I actually kind of like the newspaper stand. I might fit the newspaper stand around. Yeah, the newspaper stand can go right next to the ticket stand. So people can buy newspapers, and that also makes them more informed. A bit more, like, generally informed. The newspaper probably doesn't tell them when their train is, but that's what the board over there is for, so that's A-OK. -okay. There we go. So now we get time ticking along here, and tomorrow morning, we should have a lot more people coming in. And my timetable for both the buses and the trains is now very much set up to hopefully get a whole bunch of commuters in. But bear in mind, yeah, at some point we're going to need to expand our station to have more railways. So you can have up to eight tracks if that's what you want. For this first little mission, this is the first mission of the campaign, that would probably be slightly on the overkill side, because, you know, there's just not that many trains coming in right now. Plus, extending your actual rail network's really flipping expensive. Like, um, yeah, a single bit of rail costs 3,000, so 3,000, 6,000, 9,000. It gets very expensive building a new line very, very quickly. All right, 5 a.m. and the first commuters are starting to arrive there. I just kind of tossed in a 5 a.m. bus as well, because screw it, we may as well actually get them into the station. So they're coming in, they're buying their tickets. Everything's fine. They need to go to the bathroom, potentially. The first train actually arrives. That's going to be setting off at 7 a.m. So, wow, some people were actually on that train already. So these people now, and there should be, yeah, there's a bunch of commuters. That's the 6 a.m. bus that just arrived. Plus people are just arriving through uh, cycling and through taxis as time goes by as well. So they've got plenty of time to get in here, grab themselves a bite each if they didn't have time for breakfast, nip to the bathroom if that's what they want, and that train now sets off. And you sadly did not quite catch the train, but now you wait for the next. The bench means your tiredness goes down, your mood is absolutely fine. Uh, if anyone needs food or drink, they can actually just have some food and drink. And there are some little bathrooms right here as well. So, for the time being, everything I'd say is looking pretty good. Now, the station at some point will end up over capacity, so we might need to, like, you know, invest in more staff or more bits and pieces. Can just put some more useful stuff here. A public mailbox. Go on then, you may as well actually have access to public mailbox, though actually we're a little bit lacking in space already, to be honest. I'm just going to get rid of, I think we'll just get, yeah, we'll get rid of some of these flowers. We don't need all these flowers. Instead, we'll just have ourselves a nice public mailbox 
right there. So you can actually, you know, post some mail if you want to. My station is now big enough for the biggest train. This is, yeah, this is the final, I think, commuter train. Hang on, check the timetable and it says what's your actual current train. No, this is the second of the three commuter trains. So that's going to set off in 30 minutes time. And oh, look at that. Look at all the ticket sales coming in. This is beautiful right here. That is all the commuters just coming on that train. We are going to be making such good money here. And Spider-Man there tried to be on top of the train, but sadly was kicked off by Dr. Octopus. How are you guys all doing? You've bought yourselves a ticket. You've got yourselves a ticket. Have you got a ticket? Yeah, yeah. This person needs to go over to a machine, buy a ticket. I like that. You can literally see the ticket. Oh, and you can tell what train they want to go on by the colour of the ticket. So that person has actually come in and bought a green ticket. So a green ticket corresponds to... Oh, you're going to be waiting a while. You showed up at 20 past 11 and you want a CityLink train. So some people just come and if you don't have a good variety of trains, they're going to be stuck in your station for a while because I don't actually deal with the 6pm CityLink train. He's going to be in my station until 8pm, which is why we actually need to have lots of good facilities to keep him happy because he's going to be here all flipping day. And of course, it wouldn't be a simulator without some lovely, lovely data showing up here. So, what we have actually got here is, yeah, my income right now is uh, 19,000 off tickets. That's today so far. Vending 2,700. I have actually spent 50 grand on building, but that's only tickets so far. And I don't need to spend 54 grand on building every single day. Salary is actually quite low. So I could probably actually deal with more staff if I felt like I needed it. Though I'm not sure why I'd need more staff, because right now, yeah, cleanliness is actually good. My staff have caught up and now there's bins everywhere, everything's under control. There's a lot less vomit and litter all over the shop at the minute. Information could be better, comfort could be better. Alright, well if information could be better, let's actually put a nice big central clock right over here. There you go. There's a central clock for everyone to look at. And apparently if I just put plants up, that would actually be informative for whatever reason. Happy people spend lots of money on tickets. Everything is nice. We've got more information points we could just set up here. Yeah, a nice little information point could just be set up if I just wanted to spin that round. Honestly, this place is already getting a little bit on the crowded side. I should probably actually extend it a bit just to actually have like a nice little seating area. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to extend this a little bit. Ah, you see, this is nice. Big waiting area of benches right here. I'll put some trash cans at the side just to make sure that everyone's got access to trash cans if that's what they actually want. So trash cans there and there. Lovely. Door right here. Information so people can keep an eye on the information board while they're having a nice little sit down. And we can put some other useful stuff here like, ooh, public phones. Yeah. Have some public phones over here. So we've got, yep, the mailbox and the public phones right by the door. And an information point by this door because, yeah, the ticket thing is over there. Oh, and we definitely need ticket machines. Yeah, we could definitely do with some ticket machines in this part of the world. So ticket machines right over there. We've got another ticket machine right over here. Wouldn't mind extra ticket machines there. So, yeah, so we've got double ticket machines by this door. We've got ticket machines over here. Honestly, I'm probably do with one less bin here because litter is not a problem right now in order to have extra ticket machines right here. Because, yeah, ticket machines are super cheap. Ticket machines are like... What is that? That's uh, $800 each. Whereas if I actually want to buy an actual non-vandalizable ticket booth, that's $15,000. So sure, it saves you from the threat of vandals, but it's still a bit of a problem. And now we can take a lot of traffic out of this area because everyone who wants to wait can just wait down over here. And that'll be very, very good indeed. So let's see if anyone actually starts using that area. Now I've actually extended this out. Yeah, there you go. How do I just sit down right there? You don't want to sit down, but you would just like to have a little Luke at the benches. Well, that, there you go. He sat down. He sat down. Now he is. Yep, he's not tired in the slightest. He might need to go to the bathroom at some point. But actually, at some point, I might actually need myself a. Yeah, I might need a um, a bigger bathroom because this bathroom's only got like two or three stalls in it right now, and we are servicing more and more people. Also. I'm down to only $9,000, so I really hope today's a good day. Like, it really should be. Today should be a great day, because now all the commuters are coming. <laughs> Have you guessed that I like this game, by the way? It's a bit scruffy, because it's a really tiny indie game that's still in early access and made by only three people. This is just my little nerdy guilty pleasure right here. So, who's actually left at this point? Because, yeah, most of the commuter trains are now gone. You're really super happy. Hunger and thirst is all under control for the time being. And yeah, more people are now showing up. And hopefully all of you want commuter trains. So yeah, everyone who's got a blue ticket should now presumably be making their way over. Now you've got a green ticket. Actually, 
Is this a green ticket thing? Oh no, that is a commuter train. In fact, actually, that's the that's the last train of the day. I'm afraid after this, there's actually um there's no more trains. So you guys might want to just go home at this point, because because there's no more trains. I'm so sorry. The train doesn't actually show up until tomorrow. You've you've made a bit of a mistake. So everyone just sits down there. Yeah, possibly the waiting area is not working quite as intended, but it will be useful when I have to build my my second line. Because I do actually want to build a second line, because, of course, I'm going to actually be needing a second line to actually put more trains on. Because right now I physically can't fit any more trains in here. Okay, so, here we go. Just quickly check the timetable here. I've made about 80,000 today. That's excellent good quality news. In fact, yeah, I kind of should have checked that just before the end of the day, unfortunately. Though, actually, no, I can see it right here. That's good. So, yeah, in day one, I made 45,000 in ticket sales. So that has jumped up to 67,000. Though, I actually made less on vending, interestingly, for whatever reason. So, definitely a very, very good thing there. Everything seems to be under control. The, yeah, comfort level has jumped right up. So right now, we are full marks for cleanliness, comfort, Information's pretty darn good. Tracks is not great. And yeah, the station's not actually that big. Well, one thing I could just spend that money on is, yeah, as a little starting point, how about city transit? One thing that we do not currently have is commuter trolley bus station. So that's really expensive, but it does generate people. It needs to be put down over here. And it's a bit out of the way. To be honest, but that's just where like the the trolley buses or the trams or whatever stop. So yeah, go on. We'll spend some of that. So that is going to also be laid up. I can pretty much just recreate the yeah this one. So basically, literally everything with the exception of seven, ten, two, six, and ten. Got it. There we go. That's the same, isn't it? Yeah, that's close enough. So now we should not quite double the number of people coming through the station, but there will be a lot more people coming through which is absolutely marvellous. So day three should be a big ass day for us. And if it does go well, that's very, very good news because that might mean we've got our eye on expansion. I can't help but notice the bank offering me a loan of $400,000. Yeah, I think I would take $400,000, thank you. Sadly, there is interest, so I couldn't repay that if I wanted to, but that's fine because all I need to pay is 8,000 a day. So as long as I've got $8,000 left at the end of the day, That'll be fine. So it's time for me to set up a brand new little area here. I think we'll actually have it like over here, like track track six. Oh, hang on, would track five be fine? Track five is, yeah, track five would be fine. So it's time for us to have track one and track five. Don't ask how my station works. It is all a bit confusing, yes. So this is going to cost me, yeah, this is the cost of like extending a new line in. Uh, it, it's expensive, and I would like it to be symmetrical, if at all possible. So, I've just blown like 150,000 on that, but I've also just doubled the capacity. And we can have the music back, we don't need to mute everything. Uh, right, so, build ourselves a brand new platform and build a control room to enable more tracks. But I've already got, it's only two, isn't the control room just for two? I thought the control room was for more than two. Control more than two train tracks. I'm moderately confident I've only got two, unless you mean literally I can only use one and two, in which case that would be unfortunate, but hopefully that's not the case. And there are these very, very useful markers on the ground telling you, yeah, exactly uh, where you need to make your station go up to if you actually want it to be able to service uh, trains of a certain size, which is very, very cool indeed. Okay, keeping things nice and simple here. So, new platform, platform five, bunch of ticket machines, ticket office, information desk, little stand here. There's a bunch of benches around here. I might just put like a couple of benches up front here, just for people who are just chilling out in this sort of area. Just one bench right there is fine. Maybe one bench right here for people who enjoy train spotting. There we go. That's very considerate of me. Now, we've also got, yeah, there's a little gumball machine. So a tiny bit of food. But, you know, there's a, there's a vending machine right here. So that's absolutely fine. Now it's time to sort out the new and improved schedule. Oh, and a little path here for the people coming off the trams. So we can now actually make some good ass changes to this thing. Now bear in mind, in a perfect world, what we actually want is probably as many of the commuter services as possible to be coming into platform five. Because platform five is actually closer to the tram because most of our commuters are gonna be coming from here and from here. So platform five is more convenient for them. So yeah, we want to actually have all of the commuter services that we can moved over 
to platform 5. Uh, we cannot, however, have this on platform 5. That is just to stay on uh, number 1 over there. And then we can have this back over to number 5. Now, that should open up the ability for us to... Ooh. Okay, we might need to rethink this because that means... Why can nobody do the national? Yeah, because here, if I move this to here... I move this to here. No, then the city at the end of the day is not available. So I've increased the number of trains I'm running from. I think I was running seven originally, and I'm only going up to, like, nine. So it's not exactly a massive increase. So hopefully it all works out with the new trams. I just need to make sure I've got a good variety. Because if we don't service a particular demographic particularly well, then there's going to be trouble. Like, for example, right now, the green tickets, the city link... We're literally running one CityLink train a day. Because we're not doing the final one. And we're not doing that's not good. But National, there's only two available. So I should try and run both of them. I should try and find a way to run this CityLink. But this CityLink's surrounded by commuter trains. And it's going to clash with both of them. You know what? The CityLink people are just going to have to deal with it. We are servicing National Travellers and Commuters. That will be absolutely fine. So, everything's fine. If it's actually... Ooh. Here's the thing. Now we're actually servicing a bit more on the national front. We can actually get some new city transit. Yeah, national bus service. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right, okay. When are my nationals? My nationals, I've actually got both nationals coming in. So I serve a national at 9pm and at 4pm. Those are my only national services. So city transit, the national, uh, I need to actually build the national first. Ooh, VIP parking, la di da. Uh, 50,000. Let's just get that in right over there. So that's going to be bringing in the national people. And obviously, therefore, we would like them to be coming in at... Why is that blocked? Oh! Is it blocked because that's when everyone else is coming in? And you can only have so many buses arriving simultaneously? I'm guessing that's what's going on here. So if I was to theoretically turn this off, yeah, that'll become available. So you've... Okay! That's why you can't just have them flipping everywhere. Gotcha. So I just need, yeah, 4pm and 9pm. So as many as possible towards the end of the day would be good. Well, actually, conveniently, I don't need the 2pm slot. And 12pm might be a bit early. So I'll get these two in on the national bus service. That services the 4pm. As for the 9pm, yeah, I can get a 6pm in right there. And then I could just say, hmm, what else do I need here? That's probably... What is the 7pm servicing right now? Hang on, just check the, the timetable for the 7pm. That's servicing the 10pm train. So really that doesn't strike me as the priority. So if I was to cancel the 7pm and move the 7pm over here, that's servicing a 9pm train. And then this 8pm bus is servicing a 10pm train. That works a little bit better, I'd say. That's probably fine. And then because it's just we don't have that many people and there's plenty to get on with, we'll have a 7am national bus service coming in, even though they'll have to wait a few hours. I really hope I've got enough capacity for this, because I've just massively increased the number of people coming in, like, hugely. I should probably have an extra employee or two just ready for emergencies. And now we wait to see how it all goes wrong. Because, yeah, I've just basically massively increased how much my train station is expected to manage. And <laughs> it's probably not going to go well. Um, oh, the bathrooms especially are going to be so over capacity. It's going to be ridiculous. Right. We're coming up on 5am. The first buses will start arriving momentarily. And here we go. Train station opens. First passengers start arriving. At this point, I'm servicing a very, very big number of trains. So at 5.30am, momentarily coming into... There it is! Marvo flipping less. There comes the first train of the day. And we should actually have ourselves... Yep, there's the commuters that have come off the tram. So there's the tram passing by. And hopefully, everyone should have a, a pretty good route here. So these guys can come in over here. Hang on, let's just follow one of you. So you head over there, yeah, you've got your ticket from the ticket machine, or you already had it, I'm not sure. And you've got a train right there. There's a bathroom if you actually want to use it, but you should be pretty much A-OK. -okay. Let's just follow another route over here. That's another tram that just came in there. Wait, have I got the... Did I just put all the... I hope I just put all the trams on, really, because I've only got one tram, so I may as well kind of have all of them coming in, to be honest. In fact, yeah, I'll just do that, because it doesn't seem to have any um, penalties. So, screw it. We'll just have all of the commuters coming in. That will just mean more money. So, speaking of which, 
here's someone. So this person's coming in, they're okay, they don't have any particular needs whatsoever, and they walk up my lovely path. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. So the next destination will probably be a ticket machine. Yep, they buy a ticket nice and quickly, and now they just chill out right over there. Head towards the platform, maybe have a sit down on a bench if they can. That's presumably their train right there because they're a commuter and that should be the... Yeah, that's the arriving at 8.30 to set up a 10 commuter train. So I assume he's just going to be straight on the train and... This is all running very flipping smoothly right now. I'm very happy with this. Oh yeah, this is going well. This is going so well. I'm actually just going to slap down some more stuff right now. So, oh, apparently VIP parking doesn't go over here next to the pleb buses. No, it goes down over here next to the tram stop for some flipping reason. Uh, yeah, you know what? Why not? VIP parking. Oh, look at that. Flipping little red carpet there. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Oh, uh, can I actually give them, I might just give them a nice little uh, path for them to walk on. I'd like them to have a path. There you go. You can now walk along the path. So those are VIPs. Those guys will just show up during the day and expect to actually take the national services because, yeah, they're colour-coded in red. That coming in is the 11.30am commuter train to set off at 1pm. So everyone just swarming around here gets straight on the train. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. It's not even that complex yet, to be honest. I mean, this game is pretty simple, all things considered, uh, because it is still an early access. But it's just... I find it intensely relaxing. And are we seeing any signs of rubbish or anything? No, not much. Everyone's congregating down this side, because this is where I believe the next train's coming in. The next train's... Ah! The next train's, in fact, coming to track one, arriving at 2.30. That's the first national service for the day. In fact, actually, thinking about it, you could probably get away with a slightly shorter platform if you made sure that, yeah, your shorter trains always went to the same platform. You'd get away with paying a little bit less for your actual station. So that is the first national service for quite some time. So all the fancy people in the fancy jackets will be getting on with that. Lovely. Weirdly, actually, the national service, the tickets seem to cost the same. It always seems to be about, yeah, for a happy person, about um, $8.50. Although actually, ooh, that person was 650. That person was less happy, so they paid less for their ticket because that's just how it goes apparently. And everyone on board, nice and quickly, because I think, oh, right. Did some of you miss that train? Some of you might have just missed that train. That's a shame. So if you wanted a national service, you're going to be waiting until flipping 9 p.m. for the next one. Is that you? Yeah. That's some people who actually genuinely had tickets for the National Service and didn't quite get on it in time. Which probably means I could do with my station layout being a little bit more sensible. Oh, two trains at once! Two trains at once! I like that being two trains at once! That cheers me up. That one naffs off. In comes the next. So what just left there was the... That would have been, yeah, the commuter train at 5pm. And then we're not actually servicing the CityLink 6pm. So that is the commuter 6pm. So just plenty of commuters floating around. So if you've got a blue ticket, you're going to be wanting to hurry up, please. Come on. Hurry it. Flip. Oh, dear. You missed it. Sorry. The problem is, yeah, time ticks along quite fast. But people actually walk along. They kind of amble pretty slowly. So as a result of that, wait. Why is, why is there a flashing thing there? Why? Thank you. Why is this door just not open? What's wrong with this door exactly? Is it open now? I'm paying attention to it. Oh, now it seems to have opened up. Well, that's fine. There we go. Seems to have sorted itself out. And if you're to operate more than two tracks in the control room, that's fine. I think two tracks will do me just fine. To be honest, a third track would only let me handle, like, two more surfaces. It would not be that useful. Oh, look at this. Look at this beauty. What is this that's just actually pulled in? It's sexy. Showing up at 7.30pm. That is presumably the... Oh, that's the National. That's a flipping sleeper service, I'm guessing. 7.30pm arriving, departing at 9pm, coming in on track 5. Oh, that is sexy. That is sexy as anything. Right, everyone who's got a red ticket, hurry. Like, walk faster, because time is... You seriously do not want to go to the bathroom right now. Come on, you've only got half an hour until the train leaves and time ticks along pretty darn fast. So this person hasn't got a red ticket. I'd like not go to the vending machine, to be honest. I'd just get on the cocking train and... She's missed the train again. Your fault, I suppose. Though actually, probably my fault. 
probably what I should do is figure out like, yeah, people who are there for the national services, because they're supposed to be like the fancy people, probably like particular things. Like if I was to build a particular facility, like a special lounge bar, I'm going to guess they would congregate there. Then they'd probably be less likely to miss the trains and then I'd get more ticket revenue. But still, was that the last service of the day? Do we actually have another one at this point or? No. The only other trains go at 10 p.m. as well. That is it. Though apparently we just keep the station open for another two hours in case you want to like, you know, buy popcorn or whatever. But that is uh, the end of day three. And as soon as we hit midnight, we'll see how much money I've made. Though actually I can check now. Nah, screw it, why not? Oh yes. Oh yes. 143,000 income. Oh. I am a genius at trains. Attention. Information, however, is now down because the same information infrastructure is servicing a large number of people so they can't, like, get to the kiosks as easily. And also the whole area is just bigger. And, oh, there it is. There it flipping is. There's all my flipping money. Love it. I should also flag, by the way, that was just in the 1970s, so that was all the basic stuff. I've just quickly loaded up one of, like, the little scenarios that begins in 2010. So this is a much bigger station, and if I go into the build options, yeah, then you get a lot more choice of materials and different tracks, and obviously, like, you know, different trains require different types of tracks, so it gets a bit more interesting in that regard. Employees are the same, but yeah, there's a lot more facilities, uh, there is, yeah, there's the same actual city transit, but in terms of the number of objects and the amount of stuff you can build, as time goes by, a lot of stuff just unlocks as you enter new decades. So it's a bit more complex. And there's a lot more kind of personalization than I just showed off there. But I think you get the point, ladies and gentlemen. This here is Train Station Simulator. It is not for everybody. By no means is it for everybody. But for me, in my little nerdy heart, it just is a very lovely, relaxing game. I like this sort of thing. Even if it doesn't have much in the way of a point or progress or a story, the campaign is pretty much just a series of empty fields in a particular time period with a particular starting budget and a particular set of technology available to you and just says, hey, build a train station that works. And you know what? I think I'll put it this way. If you are the sort of person who I say to you, hey, there's 400 individualized people just randomly wandering around an open space, lay out the surrounding area to optimize their pathways, you might immediately think, oh my god, that sounds amazing, or you might think that sounds boring. And that's probably pretty much how you should figure out whether or not you should look at this game further. I personally think it's charming and lovely. I've had a nice time with it, but it is an early access. A lot of work's got to be done it yet, so it will almost certainly advance a lot more than what you see right now. But for the right person, might be worth looking into now. Link in the description below, just in case. I may well keep an eye on it, see if it turns into something special when it actually leaves early access. We may see it again in future if that's the case. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Train Station Simulator. Thank you very much, and goodbye. I've created a small problem in my road system, which is uh, it's literally impossible for anyone to ever go back into town. And this building shall be where we produce our zebras. And this much taller building next door is naturally where we produce the giraffes. Does anyone remember how the road system went? I think it was something like this.